Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Procreate 5X. And this update, let me tell you guys, this update is amazing. Without wasting any time, I'm just going to jump right in and going to show you guys each and every feature that this update has. So guys, before we move ahead, make sure your iPad is up to date or else some of the features won't work. Guys, I'm just going to start off by showing you guys all of the adjustments that we have now after the update. Now I'm just going to start off by using clone as you guys can see right at the bottom so um, if you guys have used Photoshop then you know what clone or clone tool does in Photoshop we have this clone stamp tool it is just exactly the same tool which is amazing and so if you don't know what clone tool does is it actually instantly paints one part of an image onto another part of the canvas for quick and natural duplication so that's what it does uh, for example you want to duplicate this leaf right here and so i should be on the layer where this leaf actually is so i hope that makes sense so now you want to pick up your clone tool and then just go ahead and go over the leaf and then just start tapping onto the surface where you want those leaves to appear so that's how this adjustment works now the next artifact is glitch now you might you, you guys must be wondering what is layer in pencil so if you guys want to um, add this filter onto the whole canvas or just to the layer not the whole canvas my bad but just to the layer then you can actually click layer and it will create the glitch effect just on to the layer but if you guys want to manipulate the effect just by using your pencil then you can go ahead and click pencil so that's what it is now there are four types of glitch effects that you can use in your artwork so the first one is artifact now artifact adds a glitch effect comprising of scattered horizontal lines and offset blocks so as you guys must have noticed here we have amount block size and zoom so when when i am gonna just apply this effect you can go ahead and increase the block size or decrease it just according to your likings and also you can play around with the amount of the fact that you want to uh, place on the layer when you decrease zoom all of those elements become so small and when you increase it they become larger in size so that's what this artifact does now the next thing we have here is wave now wave adds a glitch effect comprising of distorted waves as you guys must have noticed here as well we have frequency amplitude and zoom so zoom actually is just the size of all of those little particles that we have in the effect so it doesn't really matter so let me just apply this effect so we have amplitude frequency and zoom so as you guys can see here are some distorted wave kind of effect going on and you can actually increase the frequency of those waves or just decrease it and then you can decrease the zoom and those will become really really small and you can just increase those and amplitude just means to kind of make those uh waves a lot more noisy i should say i'm i don't know i'm not getting the word for it but you guys can actually see for yourself what it does so that's how this filter works now we have signal now signal adds let me just undo this now signal adds glitch effect comprising of connected horizontal lines and scattered blocks combined with slight image offset now we have amount block size and zoom so let me just apply this effect now you can control the size of the blocks that we have you can decrease them you can again just decrease the zoom play around with it then amount of it so that was simple now we the next thing we have is diverge now what 
this does is it adds a glitch effect comprising of offset horizontal lines combined with chromatic aberration now what is chromatic aberration um, it is actually the effect produced by the refraction of different wavelengths of light through slightly different angles resulting in a failure to focus now uh, image should appear to just uh, show you the example what it does or what it means actually and so again we have a redshift now this is quite confusing and i got confused when i was actually playing around with it because it has so many effects just in this one effect i hope that makes sense so the first thing we have is right red shift so let me just apply this glitch first off like that now what red shift does it actually controls the amount of red plane shifts diagonally in an rgb image so if the red shift is positive the red plane goes down and to the right as you guys must have noticed is downwards and towards the right but if it goes negative the red plane goes up and to the left so that's that you can actually play around with that by yourself then we have green shift now this actually shifts the green plane diagonally in an rgb and the positive shift goes up and to the right and this is like similar to the red shift but the only difference here is we are shifting those green planes so um, as i'm going towards the right the plane is actually shifting diagonally up and to the right now we have blue shift and it actually shifts the blue plane vertically in an rgb image so the positive amount will shift the blue plane down and a negative will shift the blue plane up so this is quite simple then we have zoom slider that actually controls the size of the blocks as we discussed earlier okay guys so the next effect that we are going to be talking about is chromatic aberration now i just told you what it is so uh when we apply this um filter here we have two settings for this filter one is perspective and one is displays now perspective allows you to set a focal point from which the chromatic um, aberration occurs so when i apply this it will just occur from that focal point so if we create displays now displays allows you to shift the chromatic aberration horizontally and vertically so i'm just gonna apply the filter as you guys can see i can actually move it around and as i like it then we have blur we can actually blur those effects out and then we have transparency which is basically like opacity so that's how it works and in perspective we have two settings as well so one is transition now this slider controls the amount of blur applied to the chromatic aberration that radiates out from the focal point so what it means is zero percent will give the edge of the effect a subtle and soft appearance as you must have noticed and when we increase it it just makes those edges a bit harder and well defined then we have fall off and now this slider controls the size of the radial distance from the focal point before any effect is applied so what it means now it means zero percent will apply the effect directly from the edge of the focal point as you guys can see and when we increase it this actually applies a clear fall off area from the focal point to the edge of the canvas so that's what it does as you guys can see as you guys can see you can actually preview cancel or reset the effect you can actually tap anywhere and this will pop up you can undo the effect you can reset it that's amazing now you guys i'm not going to go in detail about every effect we have here i can actually make a different video for that but for now i'm just going to be explaining the ones that i like the most so i'm just going to go ahead and hop on to gradient map and again you can actually control it with this the pencil or apply it on to the layer let me just um, tap onto this you can actually adjust the settings so 
you can adjust how you want the gradients to look if you want less of the that little light blue color more of that pink color and more of that blue color or just less of that dark blue color i hope that makes sense i hope you know how gradients actually work and if you don't then i will make a video all about gradients and you can actually make your own right here so i will completely make a video on gradients because i'm actually not going into detail with this but this is amazing that we finally have gradients panel and yes so that's that the next effect we have is half tone now again layer or pencil it's up to you now we have three settings right here now let me just explain you what half tone is it actually gives you a retro style print effect as you guys can see right here now here we have three settings now uh, the full color keeps the original artworks color in the background when we shift to screen print it actually shows white through the whole background actually and the newspaper one makes the whole background black and white that's just that guys the next update we have is pencil scribble so you guys can actually name layers or enter numbers just by using your apple pencil and without even having to use any text or any keyboard for that now this is not just a procreate update this is like the whole update that came in with the, ne the new ipad update um i'm just going to show you how to use it so just click onto the layer that you want to rename hit rename and let's just suppose i just want to rub it off so just scratch the word oh my god scratch it scratch the word and it will disappear now you can name it now it will rename it um as you write it so that's pretty cool so guys the next thing we have here is reference now when you turn it on you get this dialog box which shows the reference image now this is the canvas now you can import any reference image right here and this will appear on this dialog box which and you can actually move it anywhere which is quite amazing i don't know why i'm not able to do that and uh okay so i'm not really used to it but i will so that's that that's pretty amazing and because i was actually waiting for something like this uh where we can put our reference images and we can actually move it around and you just you know kind of have it on the side so that's quite amazing you guys that's a new amazing feature we have here also you guys with pencil scribble you can also play around with the text so you can just go ahead and remove it and just write in anything and it will just type in automatically that's amazing you guys i'm just loving all of these new features so the next feature that i really liked is capturing colors or swatches directly from the image without even having to picking up the colors so i'm just going to show you how it works so just click this plus icon now here we have three options new from camera new from file and new from photos now when you click new from photos it will actually um, give you all of the colors and swatches of colors from that image without even having to import that whole image on to the canvas now that's how this works then we have new from camera now you can actually pick up colors directly by using your camera i know my camera quality this camera quality is not so good now here we have two modes here we have visual mode which actually builds a swatch of colors from what the camera captures directly in front of the palette area only now this is the key point only the palette area we are capturing right now and when you go ahead and click indexed it actually captures the swatches and color from the entire picture or the entire area that the camera is capturing i hope that makes sense and that is not confusing now the last one that i'm going to be showing you is this widget right here you can actually access the last artwork that you were working on and you can just go ahead and click that and it will open up automatically without even having to go to the app like that and 
that is it for today's video you guys and i know in some parts i actually didn't tell you guys the whole detail about the features because then this video will be an hour long but if you guys want me to do that or if i'm missing out or if i'm missing some of the features and i didn't talk about those in this video then just let me know in the comment section down below and i will make another video on that i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and let me know in the comment section down below your favorite feature from this update and i will be making some detailed um videos on some of the features that i really like uh, in the future so yeah do not forget to give this video a big thumbs up also subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys the next time